Two years ago, I sat down at my PC, opened up Unity, and created a new project. It wasn't the first time I've done this. In fact, I've lost track of how many projects I left unfinished over the last years. But like every time, I was convinced that this time I was actually going to finish it. I had the idea for this project for a while already. Crafting and exploration were always my two favorite parts in games. I never really enjoyed games that make you follow a strict pre-planned path. And after having created countless little endless runners and unfinished mega projects, I wanted to try making my own little crafting and exploration game. I wanted to keep the scope of the game small and simple, which worked great as you can see, since the past teached me how important it is to stay realistic with the project. Nonetheless, I sat down and started planning a bit before getting to work. There were some aspects I wanted to have settled before starting the game's development. The genre was pretty clear from the start. The crafting part was going to be pretty straightforward. You gather resources throughout the world and can process and craft them into new ones or build structures with them that allow further processing and crafting but the exploration was where I expected things to get tricky. You see, normally when it comes to exploration in video games, it's always associated with huge AAA title worlds that are filled to the rim with detail and content. But as a solo developer and developing the game in my free time, I don't have the resources for that. I wanted the game to be a pixel art game, but I also wanted the world to have a 3D feel to be more immersive. My first idea was making the game actual 3D and using a pixel art shader when rendering it to the screen. I actually ended up creating a little test prototype for that approach. The problem was that I had absolutely no experience when it came to creating 3D assets, so I would have to spend hundreds of hours of making 3D models before reaching a quality level that I was happy with. But over the last years, I had collected hundreds if not thousands of hours making pixel art for my other projects so I decided to go with isometric pixel art. It provided the mix of pixel art style with the three-dimensional depth that I wanted the game to have, while I didn't have to learn a completely new way of making game assets. Before I continue, I wanted to mention that if you like what you see and you want to support the project, consider wishlisting Isocore on Steam through the link in my description. I would really appreciate that. So I sat down on my PC and got to work. I started by creating some basic game art so that I had something to work with. Some blocks, a tree, and a basic player sprite. The second step was to create the player and get it moving. I created a tile map, filled it with some basic tiles, and wrote a simple character controller. But WASD felt incredibly weird because of the isometric perspective. I tried a bunch of different key combinations, but nothing felt natural to control. After trying a bit around, I ended up implementing an A-star pathfinding algorithm that made the character move towards the cell that the player clicked on. These were the only controls that didn't feel weird with the isometric art style. Now that the player could move around, I needed to fill the world. I created some trees and stones to place them in the scene. However, the pathfinding algorithm needed a way of knowing which cells could be walked on and which not. For that, I created a second time map that does not get rendered to the screen, but contains which cells are being occupied by an object. Further, I added a hit and hurt mechanic to make the player able to interact with objects in the scene. And of course, a simple inventory for the materials dropped by the objects. Now that you could run around the world and interact with objects, I thought about how I wanted to shape the world. My initial idea was to separate the world into little islands that the player would have to unlock step by step. I was hoping that separating the world in these chunks would give a small world a much larger feel, since a smaller area had a much higher value compared to a large open world. The progress was going great, until the thing happened that always happens. I got bored and stopped working on the project for months. A couple months passed by when I finally decided to give the project a second try. Around this time, I made my first video about the project. It was my first YouTube video ever, and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. The video showed how I implemented lighting and shadows into the game, improving the game's looks significantly in my opinion. While it didn't add too much gameplay value, it felt like a significant step forward and I finally had fun working on the project again. The video only got about 50 views in the first month, but I was more than happy, and the little but positive feedback was awesome to see. However, not long after, I hit a dead end. The island-based world design did not feel unique or fun. I spent over a month experimenting around. I made the islands adding up as an area, I made them visible one by one, I changed the size and shape, I implemented multiple generation algorithms and different layouts, but nothing worked. There was no huge issue, but it just didn't feel fun to play in my opinion. I eventually decided to pivot to an open world format, which I initially wanted to avoid. I reused the pre-made chunks from the island system to create a simple open world loaded from a Perl and noise function. Nothing fancy, but it did a trick. On top, I had also taken care of some other mechanics like a crafting and building system, as well as a provisional UI and some basic sounds, making the game feel a bit more playable. At that point, I decided to give the devlogs another try, and almost one entire year after the first video, I released the second one. I wasn't expecting the video to perform much better than the first one, and for the first three days, it didn't. But after three days, the video exploded, and my phone kept ringing from people leaving their thoughts on the game in the comments. People wrote what they liked, what they didn't like, and what they wanted to see. And happily, most of the people liked the pivot to the open world. The fact that I could see that people were actually interested in my game was incredible. And at the same time, it also put a little pressure behind the project, which was good for when I really didn't feel like working on it. 
people started to ask me when and where the game was going to be available. And one viewer pointed out to me that I was missing out on a huge amount of potential wishlists by not having a Steam page for the game yet. He was totally right, so I fixed it right away. Something I've also been asked a lot in the comments is how to get started with game development or what you need to make your own game. My answer has always been that learning how to code is one of, if not the most essential step in bringing your own game ideas to life. But learning how to code can be really challenging, which brings us to today's sponsor, Cody. Cody is a free online learning platform for people who want to start learning to code. They offer a wide selection of programming courses, and they've recently added a bunch of new ones. Cody is completely online, so you can learn from anywhere without having to install anything. What makes Cody even better is that their entire platform is completely gamified with scores, challenges, and leaderboards, making it easier and more fun to stay motivated and reach your learning goals. You even have your own little AI assistant that helps you whenever you get stuck on an exercise. If you're interested in making games with Unity, for example, I highly recommend checking out Cody's C sharp course. So if you're ready to start your coding journey, check out Cody through the link in my description. A big thanks to Cody for sponsoring this video since every cent I make with this YouTube channel gets reinvested into the development of the project and the channel. I liked how the game was forming, and even though the game was never supposed to be hard, I was starting to miss a little challenge. Not a lot, but there was absolutely no difficulty to the game. Since I wanted it to be a survival game, there had to be a way to die. And what more original way is there than mobs? I implemented a monster class with player targeting and a simple combat system. To spice up the combat, I added a dash, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. The game is not supposed to be a fighting game, so mobs are not that present, but you do encounter some while exploring, adding a tiny bit of danger and difficulty. Also, some monster drops are needed for certain recipes, ensuring that the player can't just always avoid them. As I told you, I was using the old pre-made chunks to generate the world at first, but that was starting to become an issue. After playing a bit, it was really repetitive and homogenous. To change that, I completely remade the way that the world was generated, by generating each and every aspect of the game's world separately and using some tricks to make the world feel more interesting. At the same time, I added biomes to make the world feel more varied. After the latest video about the topic, I got contacted by Mochikano. She's an artist that has been helping me out by providing some game art, giving me more time to work on the development. She's an awesome artist, so if you want to check her out, I linked her in the description. This is also one of the reasons why sponsors like Cody are such a great help. I'm a student going to university currently, so I would not be able to afford having an artist helping me out on the project without a sponsor. Having more time for development, I used it to tackle some often requested changes. One of the most common pieces of feedback I received was about the grid and the camera shake. Many people felt the grid was too rigid or distracting and that the camera shake was uncomfortable. I've since made both of these fully adjustable in the settings, allowing players to customize their experience. The bigger changes that I made include implementing all of the biomes into one singular overworld, adding farming to the game and replacing the building menu with the overworked inventory which handles all of the building and items now. In general, I've spent the last couple of weeks working through a long list of points, making the game feel more complete. There's still a lot to do, but once that's done, I'm planning on releasing a little demo version on Steam. So this has been the two-year development of my project. I know that for two years it's not that much to show for, but I am more than happy with it. But first and foremost, this would not be able without you guys. The support for this project has been an incredible motivator. And all of the people engaging in the comments is a huge help to figure out what people like and what I can improve. So I just wanted to say thanks to all of you. As always, if you have ideas, critics, or anything else, leave it in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and don't forget to wishlist Isocore on Steam. Either way, I hope you have a great day, and see you in the next one.